Now, in this service, in the month of August, we have been looking at covenant as a church, as our culture each. I know many of us, maybe you are not around the beginning or you join in the middle, or this is your first service. As a church, we look at a theme every month. And the month of January, we looked at corporate success, and then we keep looking at till the month of August, which we are looking at covenant. And then next month, we are looking at a brand new theme. And then we looked at understanding covenant, how to, um, how to break covenant. We look at snares last Sunday. Because as a Christian, if you are saved, covenant will not affect you. But there are traps the devil set to replicate the cycle as though it has happened. Keeping covenant. And then I have a topic this one, covenant keeping God. That is what God is God. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9, Psalms 89, 34. And many scriptures in the Bible calls God a covenant keeping God. That means if you enter a covenant with him, he will keep it. Hallelujah. And then I have a topic this morning, the covenant of salt. That is what we call covenant of salt. Second, Second Chronicles 13 verse 5 in the Bible. A covenant of salt is a covenant that can never be broken no matter the condition. Even if the person decides to backslide or refuse, that covenant will stand. Like the covenant of Abraham, also the covenant of David. God said, if you can break the covenant I have with the sun and moon, then you can break my covenant with David. That's what we call the covenant of salt. You can enter a covenant with God that even if you backslide, Bible, Bible says that Solomon backslided, Jeroboam came, Jeroboam came. They totally forsook God. But because of the covenant of salt, God could not break the covenant. So when you enter a covenant, and then in the first service, as they will look at sacrifices, there is no covenant without sacrifice. You can be claiming you are in a covenant, but you are on your own. As far as God is concerned, until there is a sacrifice, there is no covenant. We have the covenant of peace. What a powerful prayer session today from Pastor David on the covenant of peace. Numbers that God gave Phinehas, the covenant of peace. So that your life will have less drama. Come on, are we together? You have, will have less drama. It is good that you escape armed robbers attack. But God can stop the armed robbers from coming. It is good you escape an accident. But the covenant of peace will exempt you from the news of accident. There are people that are afraid of... When they see a call from their phones, they are afraid. Maybe it will be a bad news. Maybe because they have had a traumatic experience. When they see a call, they are afraid. But God will give you a covenant of peace if you go into that. There are conditions for that covenant. And then we have what we call financial covenant. Genesis 28 verse 22. Ecclesiastes 25 verse 5. There are covenants will enter that are financial in nature. And say, Lord, poverty and broke existence is caused from my life. I enter a covenant of prosperity. Then we have blood covenant. Very dangerous. Preserving covenant. How to break good covenant and then this is the last sunday on the month of covenant and then like i promised will be on entering covenant how to enter covenant hallelujah now you can enter a covenant with god all this covenant covenant of longevity peace prosperity all this covenant you can enter now just sitting after the first half, the Lord gave me an illustration why people need to enter a covenant. But first of all, let's look at Deuteronomy 29, verse 9 to 15. Our anchor text, Deuteronomy 29, verse 9 to 15, entering covenant. I'm, yours. I'm missing this month that the choir is singing songs of salvation alone. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 29, verse 9 to 15. Keep there for the word of this covenant. Keep there for the word of this covenant that ye do them, that ye may prosper in all that ye do. Ye stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God, your captains of tribes and your elders and your officers, with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is in thy camp, from the hewer of thy wood unto the drawer of the water. That thou shouldest enter into covenant with the Lord thy God and into his oath which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day. That he may establish thee today for a people unto himself. Today as you enter a covenant with God or as you learn how to enter covenant, the Lord will establish you as a people or as a person unto himself. That he may be unto thee a God. The Lord will be your God of covenant. And he said unto thee as he has sworn unto thy fathers. To Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. These are examples of covenant. 
neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day. That means this covenant will extend to your children's children. Like we define always, covenant are binding agreement. When you have it, it's bind, it's hold. God does not make covenant with anyone. That is a truth I discovered, and then we must understand. Because you want to enter a covenant with God, that doesn't mean he wants to enter a covenant with you. There are conditions and there are terms and there are systems we must fulfill before he enter a covenant with us. So God does not enter a covenant with anyone. And then it is important we get into covenant. Like I always explain right from the beginning of the month, there are things that can happen to us naturally even if we don't enter a covenant with God. Example is protection. Example is provision. Our God is a provider. So even if you are not in a covenant, but when you enter a covenant, it shifts the level of commitment and then it makes the result stronger. Are we together? It's just like dating and marriage. If you are in a relationship with a lady, let me tell you something. I have discovered that marriage is, like Bishop Doug would say, is seesaw. What you are seeing is what you saw in relationship. There is nothing different my wife is doing for me in marriage apart from intimacy. There is nothing that your girlfriend will do for you apart from intimacy. She can encourage you about your assignment. She can encourage you about it. Some, even some girlfriend watch for their boyfriend even before they marry them. The only thing that differentiates marriage and relationship is that oath of marriage. Now I enter a covenant to be your husband and your wife. And at that moment, the person can say, okay, let's go all the way. So the person will relate to you, call you, encourage you about your business, encourage you about your work. You are closing from the office. You are out. There's nothing your girlfriend cannot do to you now. Think about it. Is it true? There's nothing she cannot do. There's nothing your guy cannot do. He can, they can buy clothes. They can cook for you. They can do cooler ministry. They can do everything. The only difference is intimacy. And that will never happen until you marry her and say, now I enter a covenant of marriage with you. So when you enter a covenant, the person go all the way. The encouragement will be different. Now she will encourage you with a massage. Is that not true? Now she will calm you down with a kiss, which she cannot do before. So covenant push the commitment of the person higher. So when you enter a financial covenant with God, he will provide for you even if you are not in a covenant with him. But when you are in a financial covenant, his commitment is stronger. If you are in a preservation covenant with God, the level of preservation moves higher than before. May you be wise to step into covenant when you understand and you understand the conditions.